recognizes Ms. Stanberry. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And I also want to take a moment to congratulate you as chairman of this committee. Um, this is, of course, our first sub subcommittee hearing this morning, and I do want to welcome our witnesses. Um, I do feel like some of the behavior of our um, colleagues and how they've addressed our witnesses has been unbecoming of this institution. So uh, we try to welcome folks who come before us. But it is important, of course, to reveal you know, what is going on here. And I wanna really take this opportunity to talk about what exactly this hearing is. I think we've seen some interesting and bizarre theatrics uh, this afternoon and some challenges in really uh, understanding the basic facts of how the global energy market works and, um, and, and leading the American people astray. So I wanna just take a couple of minutes here and also ask our witnesses some questions and establish you know, what is actually driving energy inflation and energy prices in the United States, namely uh, oil uh, prices at a global level and this last year, the war in Ukraine, and also, which we haven't spoken about as much, um, Putin and OPEC Plus's actions in the middle of last year to constrain uh, global production, which highly impacted our economy and which the president took emergency action to address the issues um, of how Democrats and the president are trying to address these energy security issues here in domestic markets. And of course, to talk about the action that we've taken as a body here in this Congress and the president to address our energy security long term, namely global climate change. But I think it's important before we kind of dive into the details of these issues to talk a little bit about the spin of this hearing and some of the misinformation that we're hearing. Um, and I think it's important important for us to acknowledge, as the chairman himself said, that actually two of our witnesses here today are actually fossil fuel industry folks. And in fact, um, Mr. Bushuev, um, I know we've already established this, but you worked for the Koch Brothers organization for more than 20 years. Is that correct? I worked for the company called Coke Supply and Trading. Yes, which is the global uh, partnership and in industry operated by the Koch Brothers, correct? It's a trading company that's owned by Charles and David Koch, majority owners, yes. Yes, of course. Okay, and um, Mr. Epstein, um, I do, you know, I, I know it's difficult, and uh, we had some, you know, um, bizarre um, commentary, I think, in this hearing, but it is important for us to really understand who the people are that are coming before us. Sure. And is, is it not true that one of your clients is actually a coal trade association? So just I just want to correct. So you you a, falsely said I was a fossil, fossil I, fuel I industry just, member. That's just not true? a yes or no answer. Do you? No, work I, I for can't a give yes or no answers to a loaded you, question. You, so you can you, you can ask me, Mr. Epstein, you get a real answer. Or do you, can you just work saying. for a coal trade association? Yes or no? I don't work for anybody. I have dozens okay. of clients uh, whom Mr. I advise. Epstein, I do not follow you, them. Mr. Epstein, do you advise a coal trade association? Prou no? Proudly, I yes. advise many people, okay. and, and I'm proud of it. Okay, great. So we've already established that two, are, two of our witnesses are here on behalf of the fossil fuel not industry. Not true. That's not true. I'm reclaiming. I'm not on behalf of them. I'm here on behalf so of myself. So, so you're lying. you know, I think it's important to establish that um, two of our witnesses who are here, they've been called by the majority, really lack just basic credibility around the facts. But to and add insult to injury, we We've also got this issue about these past comments about racial superiority of Western cultures. And so obviously I think we're all very disturbed. It wasn't racial superiority. That the majority would stoop to this level to call witnesses who are not fit to actually testify on these very important issues. And as a representative for New Mexico, which is one of the major energy producers in the United States, I want to just be clear on the facts. So let's talk about the facts. Last year, Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. Months later, he went to Saudi Arabia and OPEC. They constrained oil production. It jacked up global oil prices. And President Biden and his administration took an emergency action to lower gas prices. The U.S. Treasury studied it. It lowered gas prices up to 38 cents at the pump per gallon. It actually helped alleviate a massive economic crisis in the United States at the end of the summer as we were facing fuel and food shortages and American production is at an all-time high. So those are the actual facts. 
And I'm deeply disturbed to see that the majority is holding a false hearing to spin misinformation to the American people about what is actually happening in energy markets, the ways in which we've lowered prices, and our efforts to make America and the planet more secure by passing the largest single piece of legislation to address the global climate crisis, not only in American history, but in the history of the planet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, thank you very much. We're going to have a second round of questions. Uh, each member will get five minutes if they choose to take them, and as such, 